the shepherd of my soul uh, hallelujah the one who lead me by beside the still water uh, hallelujah the one who restored uh, my soul uh, hallelujah my soul exalt the Lord this morning uh, hallelujah what shall I render uh, unto the Lord uh, for all his many benefit uh, the psalmist said I will Take up the cup of salvation. Hallelujah. And call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. The righteous run to him and we are saved. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be prayed. By the way, declare, Lord, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, God, to come this morning, oh, God, to lift up your name this morning, we come to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We come this morning, Lord, no, no, God, that in order for us to sin, Lord, that the Bible said, let us have a clean hand, Lord, and a pure heart. Oh, God, we come this morning to repent, Lord, of our sin, Lord, falling short of your glory. Hallelujah. Oh, thank Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, that you were wounded, Lord. Hallelujah. To save a wretch like me. Oh, God, I just want to thank you for life and heaven more, more abundantly. Hallelujah. God, we come to celebrate you today. Hallelujah. As a body. Hallelujah. All nation Sunday. We're all voices. Honor you. We're all voices. Glorify you. We're all voices. Worship you. Hallelujah. Declare how great you are. Declare how marvelous you are. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, how great you are. Hallelujah. Multitude of people. Hallelujah. Come together to lift up your name, to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, my Jehovah Jireh, my Jehovah Nissi, hallelujah, the great I am, hallelujah, the rock in the weary land. My God, my God, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah. God, breathe upon us this morning. Breathe your miraculous present, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 
Hello, a heart are hearkening unto you, a mind are hearkening unto the will of God this morning. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, you told us to put on the whole armor. Got we come this morning, putting on the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah, the breastplate. Hallelujah, the protect Lord. Hallelujah, our heart this morning. Got to see, Lord, and know, Lord, we need the belt of truth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, for truth on the inside. Hallelujah, you declare in your word, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That the truth is declaring uh, that there is one God, uh, one faith, uh, one baptism. Uh, thank God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, for the truth of your word. Uh, I praise you, Lord, uh, for your word. Uh, I praise you, Lord, uh, that when everything else is going down, uh, that the word of the Lord uh, is going up. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible declare that heaven may pass away. Hallelujah. But his word will remain. David declare thy word, O Lord, that I hear. Oh, glory to God. Hide in the word of God in our heart. Hallelujah. I'm hiding your word. Seeking after you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. The psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man. Hallelujah. God, we just said this I alone. Panted after you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. A God, a heart seeking after you. A heart hungry to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. How excellent. Oh, Lord. How great is our God. Oh, Lord. You are the one. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my light. You are my salvation. You are my shield. You are my buckler. Oh, glory. I love you, Lord. I praise you. I love you. You are my keeper. You are the shade upon my right hand. You are the one that preserved me in my going out and in my coming in. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. I praise you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. I magnify you. I lift you up. You are great and greatly to be prayed. Hey, the Lord God, 
He's strong and mighty. The Lord God, He's strong in battle. The Lord God, He is our El Shaddai. The Lord God, He is our keeper. The Lord God, He, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. I will exalt Him. I will lift Him up. I will rejoice for the Lord our God. He is mighty. How do we bless you? Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The song I said, since I laid my burden down. Hallelujah. I feel better. So much better. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, please. Hallelujah. We're going to somewhere this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus on the main line this morning. Hallelujah. Hello, ya ya ba sa ye lo bo korra ba ba ha. He lo bo sonda ya la la ba ha. In the name of Jesus, ha. Hallelujah. The heaven declare your glory, ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to declare your glory this morning, ha. I come to lift you up, ha. I come to worship you, ha. I come to magnify you, ha. I come to praise you, ha. I come to adore you. I come to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Here's my strength this morning. Hallelujah. He said that your prayer and your praise. Hallelujah. Flow out of you. Come on, somebody. Put on the Come and pray this morning. Hallelujah. For the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord. I need you to come in here. I need you to move in the song. I need you to move in the praise. I need you to be a breakthrough this morning. In the name of Jesus. Uh, glory, glory, glory. Could you all stand with me? Because you all, you all just be, uh, hallelujah. Come on, stand up with us. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, come on, grace and glory. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I need a touch. Uh, I need God to move on my visitor. Uh, I need God to deliver. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for providing for me. Thank you, Lord, for being my keeper. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I come in with thanksgiving. I come in with praise. I come in adoring him. I come in into his house with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender all to him this morning. I surrender my voice this morning. I surrender my mind this morning. I surrender my will this morning. Hallelujah. 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 He's able to do exceedingly. Oh, God. 
It only take one. It only take one. The Bible declare that one can chase a thousand. Hallelujah. And two ten thousand. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, I am free. Hallelujah. To lift my head. I'm free. Oh, the rip the hand to the Lord and bless his name this morning. I am free. Hallelujah. To tell him how wonderful, how great he is. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I come to give him the glory this morning. I come to worship him. Oh, Spirit of the Lord, fall afresh, afresh upon us this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Here's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Ah, the windows of heaven are open this morning. Hallelujah. Come expecting God to do something new. Come expecting God to minister. Come expecting God to break forth today. In the name of the Lord, let the Holy Ghost break forth today. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. The psalmist said, Hallelujah. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, Hallelujah, is in the law of the Lord. My delight is in the Lord this morning. Ah, Hallelujah. My praise is in the Lord this morning. My worship is in the Lord this morning. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. He was the one who wake me up this morning. He was the one who gave me strength this morning. He's the one that's going to perform the miracle today. He's the one that's going to deliver today. He's the one that's going to break down every wall and every chain and every bondage. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know what your problem is. Hallelujah. But if you want your problem to be fixed, if you want your problem to be solved, give it to Jesus this morning. And how you give it to him this morning is open up your mouth and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, work on me. Lord, break into my life. Lord, break into my situation. Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. I can't do nothing without you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm giving you an opportunity to work on me. I come to be in alignment with your will, your purpose. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 Lord, hallelujah, come on, I just need two people to push with me, hallelujah, the devil's a liar, hallelujah, I feel God, hallelujah, my God is a liar, my God is a warrior, hallelujah, yeah, 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 he's a warrior, and it's about to war, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I don't serve a dead God, I serve a God, and it's alive, a mighty God, an awesome God, hallelujah, 
and so I come in hallelujah ready to praise him I come in waving my hand I come in open up my mouth and say Lord have your way have your way Lord come on somebody hallelujah tell the Lord have his way in me Lord have your way in the service Lord have your way God hallelujah yeah come on somebody hallelujah express your love to him hallelujah I tore him this morning we just got a few more minutes but we can just have a few more people come on ride this wave with me hallelujah oh I want something out of this hallelujah hallelujah you feel better if you open up your mouth you feel better if you just wave your hand hallelujah I don't know why hallelujah glory my God my God hallelujah what an awesome God he is what a great God he is hallelujah yeah 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 the joy of the Lord hallelujah I get joy hallelujah in the midst of my fire I get joy of waving my hand I get joy clapping my hand I get joy yeah hallelujah hallelujah yeah lord hallelujah the weapon that form against us shall not prosper hallelujah hallelujah when the people come together hallelujah the enemy wants to stop hallelujah but we are soldiers yeah 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 my messiah yeah lord hallelujah put on your war clothes this morning hallelujah fight the good fight of faith hallelujah i'm pressing on hallelujah somebody gonna get a breakthrough this morning hallelujah somebody gonna get delivered this morning hallelujah oh yeah 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 someone gonna get the holy ghost in the name of Jesus hallelujah come on grace and glory hallelujah we've been here before oh Lord hallelujah the Lord is my keeper the Lord is my shade upon the right hand hallelujah my 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 so you little boy yeah lord i will look to the hill from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord come on tell the enemy hey enemy you drunk to the wrong house hallelujah my help coming from the lord this morning my victory coming from the lord my breakthrough coming from the lord my healing coming from the lord my deliverance coming from the lord hallelujah the friends that you invited deliverance coming from the lord hallelujah jesus uh, the bible declare he said the thief cometh to kill to steal and to destroy but god said i come that you might have life and have it more abundantly hallelujah hallelujah sometimes you gotta take it back huh? take back what god already given unto you huh? the lord has already given you liberty huh? hallelujah occupy huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? hallelujah oh yeah 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 mm. Just lift your hand and worship with me. Hallelujah. Come on. I just need everybody to stand to your feet. If you could just stand. 
Aleluya. 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 Come on, this is not a time to be talking. This is not a time to be distracted. We're talking about soul this morning. Oh, let your blood reach, hallelujah, to the highest mountain. Let your blood reach that one in the valley. Let your blood reach that one that is struggling this morning. Let your blood reach that one that's, hallelujah, that's covered this morning. Let your blood reach that one that lost his joy. In the name of Jesus, let your blood reach, hallelujah, every visitor. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the blood, oh hallelujah, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. War, the blood. He corrobo corrababa. He dobo corrababa sata. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, we thank you right now as we prepare our hearts this morning for service. We ask you to move in our midst. We ask you to bless our visitors and our guests, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name that the saints of the Most High, hallelujah, will gaze upon the Lord and not be distracted this morning. I pray in the name of the Lord. God, that you will move in the songs. God, there's souls that need to be delivered. Hallelujah. They may not realize it, God. But God, you come to set them free. They're not here by accident. They're here because of the purpose and the will of God. And so, God, we want your will to be done this morning. God, I, we don't want no flesh to be glorified. We want you to be glorified. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. You said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and you will give rest. Give rest this morning. Give rest this morning, God. Grant peace this morning. Grant deliverance this morning. Grant healing this morning. Grant salvation this morning. Grant everything, God, that you have for the people of God this morning. And we're careful to give your name all the glory and all the praise. Ah, hallelujah. Come on, just, just, just clap your hand to the Lord this morning. Come on, clap your hand this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. We come to tell all the people and every nation that he reigns, hallelujah, hallelujah. The song says, lift him up, lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. your name, God. Hallelujah. I bless you this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift him up. Me. 
bless him one more time. Bless him. Come on. Come on, hallelujah. Lift him up, lift him up. That's what the song said. Come on, lift him up, lift him up, saints. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, act like you know to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, lift him up. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Ma, 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 sayala. Jesus. Hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just give you praise. We thank you for this wonderful day, this glorious occasion, God. We come, hallelujah, and hallelujah, all nation, God. Different voices to extol your wonderful day. We love you. We adore you. We pray for our visitors, God, that they'll feel your presence and they'll remove them to do something, God, for you. I pray in Jesus' name for freedom and liberty. I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I feel free. But I don't know about the church. Hallelujah. You got to act like you're free. Hallelujah. Some of the guests seem freer than you. Come on. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Come on. Let's just say thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for every nation. Thank the Lord for every guest. Thank the Lord for the preacher. Thank the Lord for God's goodness. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. I just wanted to welcome every one of you here for the first time or for the second time, the third time. We just thank you for being here to celebrate this occasion. And so let's turn to the book of Revelation. Here we go. Revelation chapter number seven. Mm, hallelujah. Praise God. Verses 9 and through 12. 9 through 12. Two, four verses. Lift him up. Lift him up. Praise the Lord. Are you there with me? All right, let's read together. After this, I heard, and a lo, a great multitude with no man could number of all nation and kindred and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robe and palm in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne. Mm-hmm. Worship God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. It sounds like a song, eh? Forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Just wave your hand one more time. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, just, just reach over and just shake somebody's hand which you never met before. I said, I'm glad you're here in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on. Greet somebody. Greet somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our announcements for October 22nd is Tuesday prayer at 7 p.m. Thursday and Friday, we have New England Revival Conference at 7 p.m. and it will be here. All Saints 
Next Sunday, October 29th, there will be a 15 minute for All Saints meeting directly after church to discuss our Thanksgiving community outreach. Grace and Glory members, please plan to attend. Hype Retreat, this is Connecticut District Hype Retreat. It's November 7th, I'm sorry, November 3rd and 4th. You can scan the Q card outside to get more details. Ladies Fall Day. District, Connecticut District Lady Department and uh, Autumn Luncheon. It was November 11th at 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Likewise, you can scan the Q card for, to register. All Saints, Grace and Glory will be honoring its first annual community Thanksgiving dinner on Sunday, November the 19th. We will serve from one 100 dinner to members in the Enfield community. Community, Please sign up in the foyer or on the Grace and Glory website to, do to donate item. More information on how to support to come. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. As you stand for your offertory, praise the Lord. Offertory is basically for grace and glory members. So visitors, if you you choose not to, you you don't have to. We're not forcing you to. But this is offertory is for grace and glory members. We welcome you often if you want to, but we're not compelling you to. Amen. Amen. As we stand, praise God. Pastor Cruz, could you come and bless the the offering in Jesus' name? Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Vamos a orar. We're going to be bilingual. Amen. We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your kindness, Lord, towards us. Thank you, Lord, for all nations, Lord, gathering here together, celebrating the oneness, Lord, that we are, Lord, in your kingdom. Thank you. For, Lord, what are you going to provide today for your kingdom, Lord? I thank you, Lord, for my church. I thank you, Lord, for this church that it's impacting, Lord, not only here but worldwide, Lord. Hallelujah. It's impacting all nations, and that's why we're here to celebrate, Lord, almighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the healing that's going to happen today. Thank you, Lord, for the chains that will be breaking today. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit, Lord, that it's going to move. And it's moving in a powerful way already. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands into God. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 We can march for our offerings. Amen. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. How many came to lift up the name of Jesus? How many came to exalt the name of Jesus? For there's no other name under heaven by which we shall be saved, but through the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yay! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. If we would bless him today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, lift him up today. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I'm standing on the solid rock. And that rock is the Jesus that we're singing about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing some more about him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let me hear you clap your hands. Come on. On to Jesus now. Come on. Standing on the solid rock And I know the power that I've got Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you can't prevail Say, I'm standing on the solid rock And I know the power that I've got Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you can't prevail I'm standing on a solid rock and I know the power that I've got You can say Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you can't prevail One more time I'm standing on a solid rock And you know the power that you've got You can say Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you can't prevail I am standing on a solid rock I know the power that you've got You can say Satan, you can't prevail Say it! Oh, Satan, you can't prevail Because I'm standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you've got You can say Satan, you can't prevail Say it one more time Satan, you can't prevail Satan, Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you can't prevail you can't prevail Say that you can't prevail Because I am standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you've got You can say Satan you can't prevail Say that you can't prevail Because I am standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you've got You can say Satan you can't
change your fire, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many know we serve a good God? How many believe we serve a good God? His goodness is running you down. His goodness is chasing after you. It says goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Yo cantaré de la bondad de Dios. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? Come on, he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's in the room. While you're standing, why don't you clap your hands and lift your voice? Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, that's what makes this different than the, the football game that he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We don't just clap our hands, we lift our voices. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And don't you know that in every language it's the same word, hallelujah. Praise Jehovah, praise our God, praise Jesus. In every language it's the same thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, while you're clapping your hands, why don't somebody say hallelujah in this place? Oh, I wish every nation would be represented. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come on, America, shout hallelujah. Come on, America, shout hallelujah. Come on, Jamaica, shout hallelujah. Come on, it's the same in Montego Bay. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus. Come on, St. Kitts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Guyana. Hallelujah. Guatemala, it's the same. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Puerto Rico, hallelujah. Come on, every nation ought to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because in every nation, he's the same God that gives you breath. He's the same God that gives you strength. Hallelujah. He's the same God that provides. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. All my life, you have been faithful. Does that resonate with anybody? All my life, you've been faithful. Hallelujah. And if you really want to stir up a praise, you ought to recognize this. When I wasn't faithful, he was still faithful. When I wasn't right, he still treated me right. When I wasn't doing right, he still loved me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. 
He's good in every nation. It's so wonderful to see so many faces. Hallelujah. Because we all serve the same God. I said we all serve the same God. Hallelujah. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. It was so beautiful as we were singing. Amen. I could see him moving on the hearts of people. So we weren't just singing. It's not just a concert. But the Spirit of God was moving on hearts. Amen. I told Elder, please go pray with that one. I told my wife, go pray with that one. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when the Spirit of the Lord moves... He doesn't just move to stir your emotions, but he's moving because he wants to transform your life. He wants to deliver you from something. Ah, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God will reach back in the midst of a service like this. He'll reach back 20 years and heal you of something. Hallelujah, that you've been suffering with for a long time. This is the God that we serve. And 20 years of pain can be healed in a moment. Because that's the nature of our God. Are there any witnesses in here that he's a healer? Oh, that's kind of weak. Are there any witnesses in here that he's a healer? My God is a healer. Any witnesses in here that he's a deliverer? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Any witnesses that he's the Savior? Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Come on, you know he's the one that kept you in your right mind. Somebody, it's, not, it's somebody other than me that was on the verge of losing their mind. And God came in and stabilized your thoughts. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. He's a keeper. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he's trying to move in here. He, he doesn't care about our program. He's trying to move on lives right now in the name of Jesus. If you open up your heart right now, he'll bless. If you open up, this is not a spectator sport. You ought to get involved in it. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're great and you're greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God is so good. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the praise team, the musicians. Hallelujah. I thought it was a choir of 50 up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all look so wonderful in your, your cultural, amen, dress and amen, cultural garb. And you look so great. Amen. Amen. And if it's not some other culture, you look great in your American, hallelujah, clothing. God bless America. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, amen. I know my ancestors, amen, were not from here, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. All right, all right. You can wish you were somewhere else if you want to. I'm thankful for this country. I'm thankful for where I live. I'm thankful for the peace that I have. I'm thankful for the economy. I'm thankful for the blessing. I'm thankful that God has allowed me and my family to thrive in the midst of this place. I don't take it for granted, and I don't wish I was living somewhere else. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all not answering me. You make me feel like preaching up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Uh, but we have a guest with us, a man who's going to share the word of God with us today. Amen. And uh, just a wonderful blessing to the Connecticut district. Amen. He's a man of integrity. Amen. He's a man of prayer. Amen. I see his prayer life every time I see him. Amen. His wonderful son is here with us. Amen. Amen. Sister Jessica's got that. Amen. Under control. Praise God. 
Amen. She's gifted. Uh, but God is so good. Amen. And so we're just so thankful to have evangelist Chris Rumpf with us today. Let's give him a grace and glory. Welcome. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Give God a hand clap of praise. God's going to speak to us today. Do you believe that? I said God's going to speak to us today. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. Come on, preacher. Keep that praise going up right now. Keep that praise going. It's the reason we've come here today. Before we go any further, let's just press in right now because we've came here to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. We've come here to touch his throne. We've come here to reach for him. You didn't come here to see me or anyone else, but you came here to experience the presence of the almighty God. So from the depths of your heart, can you reach for him right now? Let there be a cry that comes from your belly. Let there be a cry that comes from your soul and connect with him because he is the one who delivers. He is the one who sets free. He's the one who heals. He's the one who will strengthen you. He's the one who will change you. He's the one who will restore you. He's the one, the only one, the Alpha and Omega, the bright and morning star, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley. He is the great I Am. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Call out his name. Call out his name, Jesus, Jesus. Demons tremble at the name. And all heaven declares, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was and is to come. Oh, that's it right there. There's a pressing right there. Don't stop. Don't stop. He's taking us somewhere right now. Push into that right there. Push into it. Don't back up. Go forward. He's taking us somewhere today, but we're going to have to press in. We're going to have to pursue. We're going to have to reach for it like we've never reached for it before. Push into it. See, one of the things I've learned over the years is this. Many times we enter into services and we enter into times and the Lord is sitting there waiting. He's waiting for us to press into his goodness, press into his presence, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. But we're not supposed to just stay in the courts. We're supposed to press in to the holy of holies. But you've got to push. You can't come in and not give it. You've got to press in. When the Lord called Moses up the mountain, he called him to a place of intimacy, but Moses had to press through the darkness, the thick clouds, to finally get into the presence, into the glory that changed him. If you want to be changed today, you're going to have to press in. You're going to have to push yourself beyond your flesh. So one more time, let's press in. Lift up your voices. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Get into the Spirit. Press into the presence. The presence of the Lord is so strong. If we only understood what's really in the room right now, 
the glory is all in this house. Literally, all you've got to do is reach up and grab it by faith, and it will be done. It's lingering, it's hovering, it's waiting for those who are desperate enough to reach up into it and say, I want my healing, I want salvation, I want my life to change, I want to be made new. All you've got to do is reach up your hands and begin to call on Jesus and he will meet you. Father, I pray against anything that would hinder the flow of your spirit. I pray against every thought of insecurities or low self-esteem or unworthiness. We're only worthy because of the blood of the lamb. But with that blood, we are made worthy. We are made pure. With that spirit, it cleanses us. It's not your will that any should perish, but all come to you in repentance. So as we're reaching God, we acknowledge our need for you. We acknowledge we can't do this on our own. We'll never be good enough to do it on our own. But we need your spirit. We need your guidance. We need your blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We need the blood. We need to go down in the waters of baptism to wash away the sin, wash away the shame, wash away the guilt, wash away the pains. And guide us not to stop there because it's just the beginning. It's just the door. There is a kingdom waiting and a call for all those who will make themselves available. Every heart that will be willing and open to the presence of God, he will give you access into the kingdom and show you what your purpose is. But you've got to push beyond the door. Father, guide us as we continue into your word and into your presence. I pray, God, that there would be an awakening. Revelation would be released. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding would be released in your people that the gifts would be in operation, Lord Jesus. That where the fruit has not grown, you would multiply the fruit of the Spirit in us. That, Father, your love might guide us and we would be forever changed. We thank you for already what we're feeling and guide us as we press deeper into you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's all say in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Before we get into this scripture, I want to thank Brother and Sister Barnes for inviting me to come to worship and fellowship with you all. And I want to thank you for coming and making yourself available. Because as we approach the end, the love of many will wax cold. And in a day and hour where there's wars and rumors of wars, ungodliness in every place. This is when we, the body of Christ, should be looking upward. Not carried away with all that. Understanding the time, not being ignorant, but keeping our eyes on the Redeemer. And not allowing the spirits that roam this world to pull our eyes off of the Redeemer. Because he wants to operate in the midst of darkness, but he needs us to connect to the light and stay connected. First Peter chapter two, verse six. It's my custom to stand to the reading of the word, so I ask if you could stand if you were able. First Peter chapter two, verses six through 10. I'll read just a few scriptures and then you can be seated. It says, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, they rejected. The same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. 
even to them which stumble at the word. There's a lot of stumbling going on right now. Being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. But listen to these two verses. But ye, say me, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Say out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's called you out of something into something else. Not to toe the line and reach back to darkness, but to come out from among them and be separate. Which in times past, you see, all of us got a past. You were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In the last few verses, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and 6. It says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, say Gentiles, that's anyone who's not a Jew. If ye have heard of the dispensation of grace, which we're living in, the grace of God, which is given to me, you word, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote a four and few words. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Listen to this. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Say by the Spirit. That the Gentiles, that's you and I should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise. You and I should be partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. I want to speak to you today. You are chosen to be partakers of his promise. Lord Jesus, I pray over your people. I pray that you would open their ears to hear, open their eyes to see. I pray for understanding and wisdom and knowledge and revelation to your word that it would spring forth today. Let me release and get out of the way that your glory might do what it needs to. Your power and your grace might be extended to all of us today. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, you can be seated. Just clap unto the Lord as you're seated. Amen. As Peter sits here and talks about this, you see, we live in a, a crazy generation right now. It's no different from the generation in their day, wickedness and unrighteousness and unholiness. But yet, as he begins to talk in this, he tells them, you are a chosen generation. You see, the end of the world has come upon this generation. You're not like the generation where Abraham and Moses lived. You are in the dispensation of grace where the grace of God has been extended to you to enter into salvation and enter into a kingdom that was not meant for us, but was for the Jews. And Peter, being a Jew, is declaring... You're a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. They were select. Not everyone could be a priest. They had to be anointed. They had to be appointed. They had to be ordained. They had to go through purification. But Peter's telling us, ye are a royal priesthood. That means even now, we still have to be pure. He's chosen us. He's called us. But he requires things of you and I. That same anointing still rests on the priest. 
And that same anointing still must rest on us. You're not going to skate into heaven without being changed into his image and likeness. You see, many of us have grown up living in an unholy nation, but he tells us you're a holy nation. That means you're set apart for a specific use. The instruments in the tabernacle and in the temple were sanctified and set apart. They were holy unto God. Only he could use them. And even now, when you come to the Lord and give your vessel temple to him, he inhabits and makes it holy. It's not for the world. It's not for fornication. It's not for the clubs. It's not for alcohol. It's not for smoking. It's not for debauchery. It's not for switching your gender. It's not for anything else but glorifying God. And while we live in confusion, he shows grace to us because many of us have been confused and we're not condemning anyone for being confused. We're showing them where the light is so they can see clearly. Because if we shut off all the lights and it was dark, you would not know how to find your way. And this is the world we live in. And this is why we must stay connected because we are supposed to be a holy nation. A peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, many of us grew up in crazy homes. Some may have had good homes, but all of us have had a past. All of us have had issues. All of us have had struggles. All of us have had hurts. All of us have had pains of some kind and of some level. And many of us have felt like we want to try to get good before we get God, but that makes no sense. Because if we couldn't do it from day one, why do we think now when we understand that there is one who can save us, that we can change ourselves and get good for him and start pushing stuff away and start living the life we've always wanted to live, but we're never able to do it. I was addicted to drugs and drinking. I was a crazy mess and I could never get out myself. There was always that moment, if I can get out of this, I'll change. Then the next week came and payday came. If I can get out of this, I will change. Next month came, if I can get out of this, I will change. It wasn't until I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I will change. And the moment I said that is the moment when he came down in my situation and said, come, my child, I'll help you to change. Because we were not a people. We were wretches. We were sinful. We were prideful. We were arrogant. We were vain. But only because of his mercy. Only because of his mercy towards us. We are able to be changed. And you see. Ephesians 3. 1 said. For this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. You see, Paul was the chiefest. He studied under Gamaliel. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. But yet, God sent him to the people that were not chosen. Yet in the midst of all his education and all his religion and all the things he felt he was good, everyone looked up to him in the midst of him feeling like he was something. He still was empty and void of what the Lord really wanted him to do. And it wasn't until he got knocked off his horse and things began to change. He finally began to understand that I cannot do this in my own might. I can get so far, but all I do is I stay in my hypocrisy. All I do is I stay in my sin. And when Jesus baptized, he got baptized and filled with the spirit. When Jesus removed the scales off his eyes and gave him vision to see, it wasn't just natural, but it was spiritual vision. He's showing us something. When you come in contact with the light, it blinded him. He was already blind. Already blind. 
But what took away was his natural view of everything. God shut down his view of everything. And in darkness, he had to wait and begin to consider his life. And this is what happens to us. There's moments when we get hit rock bottom and everything gets shut out. And we have to then, in darkness, begin to ask the question, what am I going to do? And in that moment, he chose what he was going to do. God spoke to him. And when God speaks to you in those moments, you better move. You better listen. You better not delay. And here's the thing that I want you to see. When God was speaking to Paul in the midst of his darkness, in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his confusion, the Lord was speaking to Ananias over here. You see, this is why we've got to stay connected to the light. This is why we got to be separate. This is why we got to live holy. This is why we got to live righteous. Because if Ananias was not sensitive to the spirit of God, if Ananias did not exclude people, but loved everyone, and the Bible shows the humanity of a person because he's like, Lord, this man has killed. This man has murdered. He's different from me. His culture is different from me. He's different from me. I don't want anything to do with it. Many of us are the same way. Their culture is different. They act different from me. They're transgender. They're this, they're that. Who cares? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm a wretch. You're a wretch. We're all wretches. But by his grace, by his mercy, by his blood, we're set free. And in the moments of your obedience to the Lord, even when you don't understand, feel right here. God's been speaking to many of you and you don't understand why he's asking you to do what he's asking you to do. You want him to spell it out. You want him to make it plain, but he's saying, will you trust me? It might cost you your life, but will you trust me? It might cost you your reputation. Will you trust me? They're going to talk about you for reaching to this person, but will you trust me? Because when he trusted, God gave him the exact location of the very street he was on. Sensitivity to the spirit. This is why you cannot get revelation and understanding without the spirit. You cannot walk in holiness and in righteousness without the spirit. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my paths. There's more than one path that he's leading you down But you've got to know the timing and the hour and the moment when you're supposed to go down this path. And Ananias, go here, go there, go there, and then you'll find him. He followed, and when he went and found him, Brother Saul, he let God do what he needed to. And you see, God is reaching for us because there are two sides. And God's saying, I want to reach into the darkness through my body, through those who have been repented, who've been baptized in Jesus name, who've been filled with the spirit because the spirit will lead and guide you in all truth. The spirit will cleanse you on the inside. The spirit will change your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, present your body, this is his temple, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Oh, there's that holy again. A holy nation, holy and acceptable unto God, which is you and my reasonable service. It's our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is why the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is so important because it will renew your mind. We were born in sin, shapen in iniquity. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, it's like putting a clump of clay that was once something but got marred and it puts it on the potter's will and it begins to reshape you. But you've got to yield to the hand that's shaping you. And when you want to move that way, no, 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 no. Don't go back there. Just stay still and wait on me. Okay, Lord. All right. This is going to hurt. But brace, I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'm getting out the impurities. I'm getting out the unrighteousness. I'm getting out the pain. I'm getting out the hurt. 
hurts. And then when he really wants to form you, he reaches down into your spirit and begins to expand. He begins to push out. I need this vessel to hold the max that I want it to. And it's stretching you beyond what you know. It's stretching you beyond what you're comfortable with. I live by this motto. I got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because just as many of you were at this altar and you tried to surrender to God and to God to fill you, there was a moment where you had to let go of control. There's a moment when you felt the spirit, but you pulled it back down. I was in a church and a sister said when she testified, I felt the spirit coming on me. I felt the words begin to come up and I clenched it. It's subject to the person. You have the choice to release it and let it flow or to close it. She said the moment she made up in her mind and she let it go, it came out and it was like rivers of water. And she said she felt love and joy. She felt cleansing and she wondered after why did I resist it? Because the flesh is always contrary to the spirit. And this is why when you might make room to come up to this altar and begin to pray, you're about to get up and you hear the voice. You're a wretch. You know what you did last night. That's the voice of the adversary, knowing you're about to change, knowing you're about to move forward, knowing you're about to walk through the door and the door is Jesus, knowing you're about to repent, knowing you're about to say, I'm going to get baptized in Jesus name. I'm going to wash all these sins away. I no longer want to live this way. And when he hears that, he begins to march to you. He has no power. He just has a voice. But you are the ones who can shut out the voice and say, I'm going, I'm going forward. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to do what he wants me to do. But that choice is up to you. Because when you make that choice and go down in that water, if you look in the Old Testament, the Lord shows us a picture. When the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, the Bible says that Pharaoh said, oh, they're trapped. The wilderness has shut them in. And I really want you to hear this. You see, God will sometimes lead you to a place where you stop and in front of you, you cannot do it on your own. There's an insurmountable river of water, a body that stands before you. And then when you turn around, you see the very depths of hell raging and furious coming after you. And the Bible says Pharaoh pursued after them. And as he pursued after them, they began to fear and get angry and say, Moses, why did you lead me here? You see, many times God will lead you to a place like this and then things start getting exposed and you start saying, God, you know what? I began to serve you, but now look, I'm getting evicted. Now look, my boyfriend left me. Now look, this one won't talk to me. And we began to start murmur, Pastor Barnes, why did you give me that counsel? Why? And we get angry. Instead of trusting in God, because in those moments, God's trying to get you to the end of yourself so he can start you in the beginning of him. Because as they gave up and began to repent and cry out to the Lord, the Lord said, Moses, stretch forth your hand over the obstacle. And you see, this is why there's ministers and men and women of God who will speak the word and stretch it out over you. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. You need to go forward. You're in a hard place, and we're speaking it over you. And you see, even as they obeyed the word of God, which came from Moses' mouth, and even as you obey the word of God, which comes from the minister's mouth, comes from the pastor's mouth, comes from the pastor's wife, comes from the other leaders that says, go forward. When you obey that word, it's when the waters open up. And as those waters open up, they walk through it. Those waters represent a type of baptism because they went into the water. They went in one way and came out another. They went in with enemy behind them, but came out with a destroyed enemy. When you go down into the waters of baptism, it says those who have been baptized into Christ, into the water, not sprinkled. When you die and get buried, they don't sprinkle dirt on your forehead. They put you under the dirt. So the old man is dead. 
And when you go down in the waters of baptism, you go in that water so your old nature, your old man will die. And you will raise up with life. You will raise up with power. And this is when that spirit comes to you because now the vessel is finally clean. And that spirit that gets deposited in you is the down payment on the Lord coming back for you. The spirit is our earnest inheritance. Just like if you bought a house, you had to put down a thousand dollars earnest money to say, I'm coming back and I'll pay the rest. The Lord's already purchased your temple. He says, but I'm going to give you a down payment and you prepare yourself because I'm coming back for ownership. And this is why salvation is just the door. Because after you're saved, you have really just entered in. You're at the most bottom level of what God wants for you. So those of you who feel I don't need to be saved. Mark, Mark 15, 16, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ to all creatures. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Hmm. These eyes said, who hath believed our report? Have they not all heard? But not all believed. Believing is just more than saying it with your lips. You've got to bring forth meat, fruit for repentance. You've got to bring something to God. You have to bring something to him. Because in the book of Acts, Peter tells us, the house is full. There's 120 people in there. They're all praying and seeking God. And the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. They needed to see it. And they needed to hear it. They heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind. And they saw the, the flames come down as a fire, and it lit upon them. And the Bible says they all began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Say the Spirit. You cannot get anything without the Spirit. You can't get revelation. You can't get wisdom. You can't get knowledge. You can't get anything without the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is access into his kingdom. No one can step through the door except they come through Jesus. Those who have been baptized into Christ have put him on. You see, this is why he did the parable of the man who came into the wedding and didn't have on the garments. Because when you're baptized into Christ, you put him on. It's a garment of righteousness, of purity, of holiness. And when you go down in Father, Son, Holy Ghost, that's not his name. He's been given a name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Those are titles, not names. He has multiple titles. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sid Canoe, Jehovah Roth. He's got multiple titles, but he has one name. John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten father full of grace and truth. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Genesis tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But yet later in scripture, it says, and Jesus, all things were created for him and by him because he is one. He's one. And God wants to give us access into his kingdom, but we have to remember we're Gentiles. And the only reason we'll get access is if we trust in the king. Because listen to this. I want to read this to you in Ephesians 2. Actually, two verses 13. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, 
you who were sometimes afar off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who made both one. What do you mean both one? Both the Jews, the accepted people he chose, and the Gentiles who were the people who he brought in. Because the Jews hated these because we were all heathens and unrighteous. But the Bible says he made both one. Say one. one. And he broke down the middle wall of partition between us. Every nation, tribe, and tongue, every people, every ethnicity across the face of the world was now given access to the same promise that was given to the Jews. Verse 15, having abolished in the flesh, in him dying on the cross, the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself, in Jesus of twain, one new man. So making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Jesus is the manifestation of God that we could see and touch and follow. God manifested in the flesh. In him was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We cannot grab air, but we see the effects of it when it touches something. It manifests in a way, and we could not see God because God cannot be contained because he created everything. The earth is his footstool, and that's still not a measurement of how great he is. This is why we could never see God and live. But God said, I will manifest myself. I'll reveal myself in a sacrifice to redeem my people to me. And this is why when Jesus walked, he was fully God, but yet fully man. Because God had to sacrifice something. Even David said, I will not give to the Lord that which costs me nothing. Do you think the Lord... Is going to come to you and not pay something to get you. But he said, instead of you paying, I'll pay. I'll take the bill. And all of us love going out to eat when somebody else is like, I got the bill. Y'all love it. You like, Ooh. now I can get that outfit, girl. <laughs> yeah. You love when someone pays for you. So why don't we love the fact that Jesus paid for our lives by his death on the cross? Why don't we say, Lord, forgive me. I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for redeeming me and for forgiving me and for loving me. Even when I was yet a sinner, you died for me. You see, verse 17 says, and came and preached peace unto you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. You cannot get any other access, one spirit to him. It's the only way you can get access. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Listen to this. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. This is why the body of Christ is so important. When God gives his spirit, every single one of us have a place in this body. You're just as important as she is. That little girl is just as important as they are. All of us have a place, a specific place. And this is why salvation is just the beginning. Then you have to find out what your place is in the kingdom. And this is why God provides you tutors and governors and people to help you. Apostles and prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers for the edification of the body. For the work of the ministry. Till we all come into the unity. Unity. Till that building, that building fitly joins together. 
I used to have my own renovations business. I love the fact of, you see, you see this wall here? There's so much going on behind it that you have no understanding of because you weren't there when it was laid. It was laid by the apostles and prophet Jesus Christ, the head cornerstone. So when you come into church, don't just start bickering and arguing and moaning about all the things in the Bible because there's foundations that are put in for your benefits and for your safety and for the building of this body. And if you want to come in and say, why they put that door there? Why they do this? Why they do that? You go ahead and do that. You're not fitly joined together. And God's trying to bring this body together because he's coming. He is coming. And he's saying, I'm coming for a bride, for a body that is fitly joined together, that is growing up in me, growing up in my spirit. Because even now, he has released authority and dominion and power in the earth. And you're about to see the mighty move of God. Even though in the midst of unrighteousness and war, you are going to see the power of God. This is not a suggestion. This is not me getting hype. This is the word of the Lord to you. You are going to see it. You may be part of it if you choose, or you can stand back. And when it manifests, you'll beat your chest, wishing you had have submitted and yielded to the voice of the Savior. But no matter what decision you make, he's still coming. No matter you believe it or not, his word is still true. No matter if you want to accept it or not, people are still being filled. People are still being healed. People are still being delivered. Demons are still being cast out. I went to Brazil last month. And when I went there, this is what they had, 171 people. All of us were a team. And we went into this nation. And we began to go up and down the streets. We had all the national pastors of Brazil and Manaus. And we were worshiping in the streets, dancing, praising God, handing out things, inviting people to come, just worshiping, giving everything. It was like when David was bringing in the glory and his wife looked down and was mocking him because of his dance. We did not care about the adversary, the people, or anyone's opinion of us. We were just worshiping and we were allowing the light to shine. We we're allowing the glory to flow. We were allowing the spirit to flow the same way they were in the upper room when the spirit hit them. And all the masses were looking, what's going on here? How is it that we hear these people speak who are Galileans? Take notice of this. It said there were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Pontus, Pamphylia, Pamgeria, um, proselytes, Jews, Cretes, Arabians. All of them heard, all these nations, all these tongues, all these places they were spread around the world, heard them magnify God in their born language where they were. You see, the Lord was trying to show a picture. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter where you're going. You will hear my voice because there's no nation, no people, no tribe, no tongue that I will not reach, that I will not give my all for. I will reach to you. If it's a small village in the backside of the Amazon, God will reach. But God will reach through us. That's where we get quiet. They were in the middle of Jerusalem, worshiping. And the masses came around to see and to hear. And the Bible says, when they came, they began to mock, some mocked, but that the masses gave attention. And Peter began to preach. You see, after we went through all the crowds and did that the first night, we came to the soccer stadium. And that night, it wasn't, no, it was no pay, it was just we advertised. 35,000 people showed up walking. You could see them as we were coming to the Coliseum or to the soccer stadium. They were walking and whatever they had. And they gathered in that place and we began to preach to them repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus. 
and that the Lord will fill you with his spirit. And you see, because of the hunger and the desire of the people, they had been entrenched in Catholicism. We went into one of the like most oldest Catholic churches, and when we stepped in there, we felt the Holy Ghost. And we were like, wait a minute. But we understood. They're so hungry that we could have literally turned and laid hands on them, and they would have received the Holy Ghost. But it wasn't the place. We withheld until we got to the place where God had ordained. This is why you got to be sensitive to the Spirit. Because not everything in every situation you're supposed to respond to. And you see, when we went in there, the prayer of faith was prayed. And they told us this, y'all. I'm going to be very transparent. They said, y'all, when you go out there, there's, there was 15,000 people on the field to receive the Holy Ghost to pray. And there was 171 of us. That's way too many heads and hands. They told us, you will begin to walk out and pray for people. And before you can touch them, they will receive it. And you will touch and go. And you see, this is the point where many of us check out. Oh, you're in a different country. Oh, this stuff's crazy. These eyes beheld it. And I can only speak to you what I've seen, what I've heard, and what I experienced. And I tell you this, when they spoke that word of faith, those people lifted their hands. And before you could touch them, they were speaking in tongues. Old men, old women. Women, young men, young women, little kids. They were speaking in tongues. God's spirit was moving. We were sitting there and praying. One lady picked up her son. His foot was cleft like this, laid hands and prayed, put him down, and he starts walking around. One woman standing at the altar. They pray for her. Blood starts coming out of her mouth. We pray harder. She spits up a tumor and gets the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, where there is hunger, where there is desire, where you will meet God, he will meet you. We serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. But you and I have got to push and believe it. Over 12,000 12, people received the gift of the Holy Ghost and over 6,000 miracles. And they keep coming back more reports of more miracles. But here's the thing. This was spoken before we went out. I'll tell you the vision. A young 18-year-old kid had a vision while we were praying. And this is where it's coming here. In the vision, there was angels around the whole stadium floor with their swords pointed to the ground. And Michael, the archangel, had his sword pointed to heaven. And as we prayed, it said a great light shone down and hit the stadium and blew out and everything was consumed. But here's the thing. They said everything that's consumed is now going back to where it came from. Just like when the spirit was poured out and all those nations were there. It said 3,000 souls were added, but they were not from Jerusalem. So they went back to where they came from. And that spirit, that flame went with them. This is why you have got to live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, because God did not give you the Holy Ghost to sit on a pew and do nothing, but he gave you the Holy Ghost to take that fire and now go and spread it and go declare it and go shine your light and allow him to teach you and guide you and lead you. But many of us are too comfortable and don't want to let go. Just for a moment, lift up your hands. Lord Jesus, I pray. I pray against every spirit of fear, every spirit of doubt and intimidation, every lie that's been spoken over this congregation of people, everyone that is here. God, I pray, bind those spirits and loose boldness in the house. God, loose understanding in the house. Loose your spirit in their lives. God, help them to step out in faith. The more they step out in faith, the boldness will come and they'll trust you and they'll see. Open their eyes that they might see that there are more that are for them than are against them you see we've got to get to the place where we don't contain this any longer God's done messing around he's saying I'm calling all men and women to repentance I'm calling every single one of you to a place of going deeper in the spirit I want to draw to a close with this. He 
You see, within Ephesians 3, in verse 16 to 21, it says this. Actually, I'll start at verse 14. It says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven, say in heaven, and in earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell. You see, we have a problem with dwelling. You see, if you really want to know who you are in the Lord, if you really want to get in a place with God, you have to get under the shadow of the Almighty. You have to get in the secret place, in the place of prayer. You've got to be able to push everything out and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And just begin to pray. and Don't ask for anything, but just go and allow God to begin to cleanse you. Let him begin to speak to you. Become sensitive to his movements. You see, many of us are afraid of intimacy with God because we're afraid of what he will see and what he will expose. And we're afraid he'll judge us and condemn us. Instead of that, he really wants to love you and accept you and heal you. But we have got to let the walls down and allow him in the inner man. Because Christ wants to dwell in your heart by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. For God is love. You see, when we're rooted in a place of prayer. When we're grounded in that intimacy with God. You see, God begins to allow us to explore things in the spirit. You see, because I want to teach you something. There are dimensions in the kingdom of God. And when God pulls you to a dimension, like when you get salvation, you enter in. That is the dimension. It's a dimension. And you've got to learn and operate in that dimension. And God will teach you things and he'll show you things. But then when it's time for you to go to another level, it's going to require more of you. This is why John said, I must decrease so he can increase what I thought in this level is was the ministry it's got to go away so what he desires and his will can be fulfilled in the next level even if it costs you your life because when you get into those levels he teaches you verse 18 says may be able to comprehend with all saints listen to this what is the breadth the length the depth and the height it's not just talking about aspects of love but it's talking about you walking in dimensions of the spirit and understanding how far you can go how deep you can go in him how high he can carry you in the spirit and you get rooted in that and you begin to push away the things of the world when Moses ascended the mountain he got into that place with God and when he came back down his countenance shown the light was so bright they couldn't even stare at him they had to veil him we need to get in the place of prayer that when we step out the world is like what's that light right there what's that right there what's so different about that but it only comes when you get yourself in the presence of the Lord a book won't get you there your doctorate your PhD your masters are all great but they won't get you there an intimate relationship with God is what's going to get you there. Verse 19, and to know, not just talk about, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It passes our understanding. And we've got to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge him intimate with him communicate with him and he will direct our paths be not wise in your own eyes but fear the Lord and depart from evil come out of darkness into his marvelous light that ye might be filled with the fullness of God the fullness of the Godhead was in him bodily 
He desires to put the fullness in us as well. But we're going to have to go through the same path that he took. The death of you and I. To get to the life and the resurrection power that will help draw men unto him. As we stand, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh not around us, but in us. Unto him be glory by Christ Jesus through all ages. Amen. World without end. Amen. I have released this word. And you see, now it's our chance to say, Lord, you've called me from my nation, from my tribe. You've called me from the place that I was in darkness. And now you're asking me to lay myself on an altar so you can expand me, so you can fill me, so that you can mold me and shape me. And I told you before, the moment you began to make moves, to begin to change and let your mind be renewed is the moment the adversary is going to begin to trip you up and saying, don't do it. You're not worthy enough, but Jesus loves you. You are worthy enough. You don't have to do anything to receive it. Just receive it. And even in this moment, God is moving and speaking. And I tell you right now, he loves you. You're worthy. You're worthy of his affection. He wants to begin to move in you. But you see, even as Moses ascended the mountain, he had to make steps to that place. And even in this moment, the Lord always wants us to make steps because the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You can't just say in your head, I believe everything you say, preacher. But yet your response in your spirit is, I'm still a wretch and I can't do it. You've got to say, you know what? I'm bringing my pain. I'm bringing my hurts. I'm bringing my issues. I'm bringing my sinful ways. And I'm laying myself down on the potter's wheel. And I'm saying, God, if you can use anything, you can use me. I surrender to you. And I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my mind. If God's pulling you, step out. Don't wait for anything. I'm not the one that heals you. He is. And he's in this place. And he's reaching, saying, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I'm inviting you to come. I'm inviting you. God's pulling at your heart. I'm inviting you to say, Lord, change me. I'm inviting you. If you want God to heal you, step forward. If you want God to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, step forward. If you want God to transform your mind, step forward. If you want God to renew your mind, step forward. And as you step forward, what I want you to do is lift your hands lift your hands high to the Lord lift your head don't put your head down lift your head up and I want you to begin to do this we're all going to repent together we're going to ask the Lord to cleanse us Lord Jesus I pray all these souls that are coming right now Lord forgive us of the things we've seen with our eyes forgive us of the things we've heard with our ears and believe forgive us of the things we've done with our bodies the things we've spoken Lord the things we've touched the place as we've gone forgive us Lord for we were in darkness but you are the one who will bring us into light I ask your forgiveness I ask that you cleanse me I give myself to you that you might wash me and restore me and the Bible says that if you confess your sins Confess your need for him. Confess your pride and arrogance, your vanity. He's faithful and just to forgive us of all sin and cleanse us of unrighteousness. 
And right now he's saying to you, you that have surrendered and lifted your hands, you that have from your heart, not just from your lips, because you can speak it with your lips, but there's got to be something inside that says, I want to change. I want to change. I want to change. He will heal you. He is faithful. In a moment, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith over you. And when I pray this prayer, the Bible says, they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have heard the word. And as I pray this prayer, at the end of the prayer, I'm going to scream out hallelujah. And I want you from the top of your lungs to scream the name of Jesus. And as you do, I want you to worship him. And those who need healing, God is going to release healing in this room. Those who need the spirit, God's going to release the spirit in this room. Those who have struggled with mental anguish, God is going to release healing in this room. And your response, your heart, your belief will grab onto that healing and God will do what he said. So I'm going to pray, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the word that's been released in this room today. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. And Father, I'm praying by the authority of the word of God and the power in the name of the Lord Jesus. You have died. You have bled and resurrected. And you said you would send your spirit back. So I'm praying in this moment, Lord, that you would lose your spirit of anointing, of power, of of healing, of direction, of boldness, of revelation on your people. Hallelujah! Scream the name of Jesus! Worship him! Worship him! Release it on them, Lord! Release your power. Ministers begin to go through and pray. Release your glory.
Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing.
that has been released within the earth. This shaking is opening up and stirring the hearts of men and women. This shaking that I have released is to get my people to begin to understand what I am doing in the midst of this earth. In every soul, every mind, every heart that will make themselves available to me. I will use them in this last day. But I am shaking loose all of the things that have held my people back from pushing forward. And I tell you this day, says the Lord, I am releasing my people to go forward in authority, in boldness, in demonstration, in power, and do what I have called my body to do. But you must release everything into my hands and hold nothing back for yourselves. I need you to be sensitive to the flow of my spirit, not only here, but when you're walking to and fro, because there are souls that I need to send you to that are waiting that are waiting for you to come. And when you answer, when I call to you, I will send you. And you will see my glory revealed in greater ways than you've already seen it. I've already been using you in places. I've already been pouring out my spirit. But I tell you this day, more is coming. Greater power, greater glory, greater authority. But do not touch the glory. Walk in the authority and walk in the power. Allow my spirit to flow. Do not hinder it or quench it. Forget about yourself and allow me full access. And when you allow me full access is when you will see the glory flow in the greatest capacity it was meant to flow in your life. But it only comes when you are finally empty of yourself and you are fully yielded, submitted, and obedient to me. And when you reach this moment, that is the moment that I can use you at your greatest potential. This is where I'm calling you, my people. It is time for you to step up into a higher dimension. You've already been approaching the door that I have opened in the spirit for this church. You've already been seeing manifestations in great ways. But you hear the word of the Lord. You are going to see it in greater ways. And not just a select few, but as you all bind together in one mind and one accord, you're going to see it in greater measures and in greater locations because I will scatter you all over that men's eyes might be drawn to me. I tell you this day, Submit, stay in my spirit, walk in it, live in it, dwell in it, abide in it, be changed by it. And this is the place where I can operate through you in this earth. I 
tell you again, greater authority and greater power has been released. But you must give everything to operate into it. As you give everything, I will train you and teach you in the spirit. And I will guide you. But you must give everything. For the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Lord, I loose a spirit of intercession within the lives of your people. God, throughout the week and even now, God, allow there to be a groan in the spirit that moves. And God, we would begin to intercede for our families, homes, and friends, and those around us for nations and countries. I pray that in this church and pray that you would use them and guide them. In Jesus' name. God's taking you deeper in grace and glory. But in order for God, anytime he takes us deeper, he's got to remove more out of us so that our roots can gain more strength so when the winds come, we won't let go and we won't bow. Let God take you deeper in his spirit and never let go. I love you all and I'm praying for you all. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand on our feet and clap our hands to the Lord. Did you enjoy the word of the Lord today? Did you let it sink in? Hallelujah. We heard from heaven today. Hallelujah. And even beyond his words, I felt the hunger for the things of God. I felt him living what he's talking about. Did you feel that? Hallelujah. And God is calling us to more. Hallelujah. I pray that before you leave this place, you have in your mind, there are some things I got to let go. There may be some people I've got to let go. Mm. I got to make some hard decisions. Hallelujah. Just two more things. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we made the water ready for you. It's just at your temperature, just what you wanted it to be at. We can baptize you today in the name of Jesus. And when it happens, there's nothing special about the water. And it ain't about the preacher or the deacon. It's about the declaration of the name. When that name is declared over you, things change for the better. And so you can be baptized in the name of Jesus today. I want you to know that. Amen. We're ready for you. Secondly, amen. Please don't just leave. Amen. Sometimes when church is over, amen, there's a rush to get to the parking lot and to get somewhere. But I'm telling you, you smell something, what you smell is good. Amen. There's food and cultural expressions all around, starting over here and all in the foyer. And you ought to just get a taste. Amen. It's not sitting down at a restaurant, I guess, but you can get a taste of different cultures. Ask them what the recipe is. Amen. Praise the Lord. And enjoy. We've enjoyed in the spirit. Now we can enjoy in the natural food and fellowship. Amen. Did you get that? Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's one last time. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Greet somebody. Amen. Let them know you love them. God bless you.